So if you are new to changing your wheels and tires, maybe you're new to the wheel and tire game, we wanna make sure that we give you some information that you should know. For the majority of you here, you're probably going to have good experience with car modification. In fact, you're probably addicted to it, just like I am. Your brand new rock. But if you're not, if you're finding this video and you are new to wheels and tires, we wanna make sure that we give you some knowledge that you can use to have a good experience with your wheel and tire package. Think of us as kind of that uncle that comes around every Thanksgiving. We're here to impart knowledge for you, so this uncle is gonna give you five tips on how you can make sure that you have a really good experience with your new wheels and tires. Okay, so let's get into our first point, and that is how to maintain the proper finish on your wheels. When you get your wheels new out of the box, one of the most beneficial things that you can do is ceramic coat your wheels. Now, we do happen to sell our own ceramic coating kit that you can get at store.koenigwheels.com. It's a CCD Max kit, as we call it, and it has everything that you possibly can need to properly ceramic coat your set of wheels. But with that said, uh, you can use other companies' ceramic coating kits, and by ceramic coating your set of wheels new out of the box, you ensure that there's no debris or, or uh, contaminants on the wheel. You can properly prep the wheel, put the ceramic coating on, and this will maintain the finish of your wheel so much longer. So if you're thinking about that, if you're in a harsh environment, if you're looking for any sort of protection for your wheels, this is a tip number one, and it is extremely crucial to make sure that you can prolong the finish of your wheels. Now let me tell you how to properly make sure it stays on the car. That's with the correct insulation hardware. See, every wheel is going to require insulation hardware, and if you do aftermarket wheels, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have the proper insulation hardware. Now, most aftermarket wheels are not gonna be hub-centric for your vehicle. Now, if you're not sure what this means, you can find more information on our YouTube channel. However, it's really very simple. Basically, the center bore of your wheel is gonna be larger than the center bore of your hub. So when the wheel goes onto the car, we now need to take up the difference, the gap. Basically, all this is gonna do is occupy the distance between the center bore of your wheel and the size of your hub. And so it goes right in there, make sure that there's no movement at all. And this way, when you tighten down the lug nuts, it's gonna make sure that it not only is the wheel centric, but it's in the perfect position for tightening. So hub-centric rings are pretty standard. You can get them from your installer, but if you're having problems finding them, or if you just wanna make sure that you get the right ones, if you happen to buy a set of Koenig wheels, you can easily get them from our website, store.koenigwheels.com. Okay, so we spoke about hub-centric rings. Let's talk about this lug nut again. See, when your car comes from the factory, there is a good chance that your lug nut will be a ball-shaped lug nut. And all that really means is that the actual shape of the base of the lug nut that meets the wheel is actually gonna be more of a rounded shape. Now, most aftermarket wheels are gonna be tapered seat or they're gonna be conical seat. Essentially the same thing. So you need to have conical seat lug nuts for most aftermarket wheels, including the wheels that we make. Ball seat and conical seat, they don't interchange, cannot use them. One of the downfalls when people take their stock mounting hardware, which is ball seat, and try to put it onto a conical seat wheel is that they could watch the wheel essentially start to vibrate loose and come off the car. That's pretty catastrophic. Don't make that mistake. Make sure that if you're getting a set of aftermarket wheels, go ahead and ask the installer or a local wheel and tire professional what the proper lug installation hardware is for you. Okay, so we told you what installation hardware in point two that you needed to have to put your wheels on the car. Let me tell you the proper way to fasten them because I think this has been over glamorized, if that's even a word, uh, on the old uh, TV and stuff when you see people working in a mechanic shop. And that is the use of an impact gun. It's not my fault, come on. Ah! It's supposed it's society's. Ah! My friends, uh, using an impact gun to take things off the car, fine. Using an impact gun to put it on the car, not so much. Here's the thing. If you're gonna put your wheels onto the car, please, please, please make sure that you tighten down the lug nuts or lug bolts with a torque wrench and make sure that you are properly torquing them. Don't over torque them. The thing about those Ugga Dugga guns is they put a lot of torque on some of those lug nuts and all you're doing is prematurely uh, stressing out your stud or your lug bolt uh, and that's gonna cause failure over time and that's one of the things we're trying to avoid. We wanna make sure we get the proper torque onto the wheel to make sure we have the proper clamping force, but we're not looking to overdo it. So as long as we're on mounting and installation hardware, it's really important I mention to you one of the most overlooked things, period. 
and that has to do with threat engagement. If you're not sure what this term is, we've done a great video on our YouTube channel, make sure you check that out. But threat engagement is essentially the amount that a lug bolt either threads into the hub or the amount that a lug nut actually winds onto the stud. So when you get in your new set of wheels and you put them on with the new installation hardware, you may find out that you don't have enough turns on the lug nut or the lug bolt, meaning that the lug nut is actually not taking up enough of the stud. That's the thread engagement. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure that we have enough of this because this is the part that allows the amount of clamping force and stress to be applied to the vehicle so that your wheel stays on the car. With that said, all I'm asking you to do is make sure you check your installation hardware, make sure it's the proper amount of thread engagement. Again, we've done a great video on our YouTube channel, tells you how much thread engagement you need, how to figure it out, how to find it. Super easy, but it's also worth a watch. So head over there. So point number four that we're kind of moving on to here has to do with the tire. But here's why I want to mention it, and that has to do with choosing the correct overall rolling diameter for your vehicle. See, there's a lot of different tire sizes out there. If you have investigated or researched buying a set of tires, there's no doubt that you have been put at one of those screens where you're supposed to use the little drop downs and you click it down, there's like 17,000 choices all in a row. And the point here is the reason we make so many different sizes is to make sure that we are finding the one that's as close to the overall rolling diameter of the one that came on your vehicle. See, even when you change the wheel diameter, right? If you go from 15 to a 17, we're still keeping the tire height, the overall tire height. That means if you were to measure from the bottom of the tire to the top of the tire, we're still maintaining that same diameter, regardless of what size wheel we're gonna put in the middle. So what's gonna happen? If you put a bigger size wheel, you're going to have a smaller profile tire. If you put a smaller size wheel, you're gonna have a bigger profile tire. But the reason that happens is because we're maintaining the overall rolling diameter. That's the goal. That will in turn make sure that things like your speedometer, vehicle stability system, traction controls, all those things that are looking for certain circumferences get the right measurement, get the right numbers. Their sensors see the right thing. And that's what we're trying to do. Again, our goal in this video is to make sure that you are gonna have a good experience. And let me tell you something, if you mess this up, you could have a really bad experience, especially in more sophisticated vehicles or the vehicles that are much newer today. So just keep this in mind, we're just trying to help you have a really good smile on your face when you're cruising down the street, repping those Koenig wheels, right? Right, because you are, right? Like that's, yeah, all right. you purchase your wheels online right now they've come in and your plan is to then take them to the installation shop get your tires there have them mounted up put in your vehicle everything's gonna be great here's one thing i would suggest uh, go ahead and take uh take your front and rear wheel off so jack up the car properly hold it with a jack stand because you know how to do that uh, make sure that we're going to take one of the wheels that are intended for the front of the vehicle out of the box and we're going to put it onto the car we don't need lug nuts we're going to make sure it stays flat against the hub and we're going to make sure that it rotates it doesn't come into contact with brakes suspension or it's going to stick out of the body make sure you pick the right wheel do it now while the thing is still new and hasn't been mounted also do it before you go spend 80 90 100 dollars on getting your wheels and tires mounted together because finding the issue now is way easier than getting all the way there, lugging all the wheels, doing the whole thing to find out that you picked the wrong size or the wrong offset or the wrong fitment wheel, right? Just something that comes into your head. It also gives you a good time if you were the one that purchased the installation hardware to make sure that you got the right stuff. You got conical seat hardware, that you have hub rings, that you have everything and everything is ready to go at the installation shop. So that's it, my friends. Listen, we understand this video is not for everybody, right? Clearly, there's a lot of you that are gonna already know all these points, but for those that are getting started with wheels and tires, we're just putting this thing out there. Whether you have our wheels or not, these tips will help you to have a positive experience with your wheel and tire crusade, and you will look like a superhero, plus you'll look pretty cool rolling in your new set of wheels. That's it for this one. We'll catch you on the next one.